Hi, welcome to the Lower Makefield Township Historic Commission meeting uh, for June. I'm Dr. Helen Hines, I'm the chair, and we have um, Barbara Nuzzolo, Joe Camarado, and Fred Weiss, our, our supervisor liaison, um, present at this point. Um, we start our meeting, uh, this is unusual for us, meeting at one o'clock in the afternoon, but it was better than trying to start a meeting at nine o'clock at night. So here we are. Um, we have been meeting on a Zoom privately. So we're basically now going to a public Zoom meeting. Um, and our first order of business is to look at the minutes for April. Hi guys, how are you all? Well, Helen, how are you doing? Barb? Can you hear me? Now we can hear you, Barb. That's great. Joe? I'm doing well, Helen. How are you? Oh, fine. You look good. See, you've got your posters up in the back, too. <laughs> okay. Um, we had, a, we had a April minutes. Nobody's here to take the minutes. Barb, could you possibly sure. take minutes? Sure. All right, there's one correction for our no, Helen, Helen, I don't know that you saw that I'm here. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe because your view might not see everything, but um, I, so see I, I was going to take minutes, but if it goes longer than an hour, can you jump in, Barb? Because no. I really can't. Sure, I can after an hour. an hour, yes. Okay, thanks. Great to see you, Becky. Good, you're, I'm glad you're here. Thank you for taking minutes. Um, we were just going to review them, and I, I did find just reviewing today, I, I didn't notice this before, but there is one, one thing that needs to be corrected from the meeting um, in our um, April minutes, and that is the, under Edgewood Village, we were discussing about HARB and the meeting that was upcoming at that point for the zoning variance for Edgewood Village, um, and there were two buildings, Carriage Crest and Heston Hall, um, that Mr. Troilo, a developer, will likely try to tear down. That's incorrect. He would. He was asking to demolish Carriage Crest. Um, the other building that he owns, Heston Hall, I don't think he'd ever want to demolish that. That's one of his better selling units. Um, but I think we were discussing he was coming in for a variance for the parking lot for that one. So that okay. like the would be to add, you know, demolition for the first and parking lot. Um, variance for the second. Okay. Other than that, I see nothing. Do, does anybody else have any corrections for Becky? I don't see any. I don't see any either. Okay, could we have a motion to pass the minutes as amended? I make a motion that the minutes be passed as amended. I second that motion. All in favor? Aye. Hi. All right, the minutes are hereby amended and accepted. Uh, so, Beck, if you could make those changes and send it to Barbara, that would be awesome. All right, moving on to the rest of the agenda. Um, this shouldn't be a really long meeting, so I, I really wanted to just get to um, the, the major reports. The second thing on the agenda is the treasurer's report, which remains unchanged as far as I know. Um, there is one little issue, and that's about the township webpage that we were doing in conjunction with the Historical Society. I love doing it. It's the Lower Makefield Township Historical um, webpage, Lower Makefield Township History. Um, somehow it got hacked, and somebody put an ad on to our webpage. So we are now being charged by Facebook for an advertisement of, a, of somebody's odd little um, truck that they were trying to sell on Facebook. And um, of course, we didn't authorize it and I've sent them a, a message, but somehow the amount that is in our account with Facebook is the exact amount that's in our treasury. So I'm a little concerned that somehow they got that number and could charge up to $4,000 um, from that. So I'm going to alert Fred, Fred to that. And in case anything comes in on a bill from Facebook to the township just deny it you know our child Kurt to please uh, not pay that bill we did not authorize that ad good to know <laughs> thank you fred 
All right, so that's the, the only thing under the treasurer's report. Um, so now let's look at Slate Hill Cemetery. Um, we were discussing um, getting the this, the tombstones put in as soon as we go to um, yellow, if possible, from the township. Um, but I can we can coordinate that, Fred, if you don't think that that's possible. Um, and you're suggesting, I guess, that we wait till we turn to green. Um, can you tell us about that? It depends on how many people you expect. If you only expect up to 25 people to be at the cemetery, we could do it next, you know, after the 8th of this month. So well, I'll leave it in your hands. If you think it's going to be more than, you know, up to around 50 people, uh, we're going to have to wait till green. Okay, so Barb, you want to weigh in on that? I know you, you, you're the person. I Right. I think that we really should wait because we have, I know out of the three uh, people that we asked to speak, they're each bringing two or three people. So right there is nine people that I know of. So with that being said, I think 25 is kind of a smaller number than we had expected to be there. Plus we don't yeah, want to limit it. We don't want to have to limit it if there are people that want to come, you know what I mean? Like, that's my feeling. I also, think right. I don't want to limit the, like, I don't want to say to the people that I'm inviting, right. you know, you can only have one guest. I'd rather just let it open-ended. Right. We're talking about We've waited this long, so. <laughs> we're talking about the ceremony or the actual work party to put the tombstones in? I think they're talking about the ceremony itself. Yeah. The work yeah, part could be done anytime. Yeah, I think we could plan it at any time. So I'll, I'll coordinate that with the public works department, if that's okay, Fred. And then, you know, actually the longer it goes after the tombstones are settled, the better gardening can happen and they'll look more, more natural. Um, so hopefully if we're looking at after the 1st of July, is that what you expect, Fred? I think the first week in July will probably, you know, unless there's some surprise, it sounds like, uh, from what I'm hearing, that the first week in July will go from yellow to green. And by then, I, this is a little sarcastic, but by then we'll know who the candidates are for the fall election as well. So um, basically we'll know which which politicians will be showing up as well, right, Barb? And I think so too, yes. Okay. I, once so we get the, excuse me, once we get the date, then I can proceed by reinviting them. Okay, I think that makes sense. So how about then we postpone, we were planning to do a meeting in, um, to actually kind of lay out where, what we were gonna be doing for the ceremony for the 15th of June. I had, had reserved that meeting for the township just in case we were going to push forward faster. But if we're going to July, we can postpone that meeting and have a meeting in July instead. Usually we don't have a meeting in July, but perhaps we'll have the meeting the first week in July if that's okay with the rest of the group. Helen, when were you thinking of starting uh, having this uh, ceremony? Like what dates or what weeks in July? Uh, let me look and think about that. Um, let's look at a calendar. Here. Red, is there any better day for you guys? Yeah. Anybody planning a, a, a big summer vacation? Yeah, but we should be back. We're planning on being away end of June, beginning of July. So we should be back by the 4th. By when, Fred? No, I was, uh, Joe was talking. Joe, uh, sorry, Joe. We should be back by July 4th. Okay. Uh, so the 4th of July is on a Saturday. So that means Sunday is probably the, um, the day that they're going to be having the celebration, right? I don't know. So so let's let's – that would be our – Fred? Yes. What would you guess? Is the official holiday going to be the 6th of July then, or? Oh, we have no plans in July for any, any ceremony, anything at this point. Well, the problem is if the 6th of July is a, um, is the official 4th of July celebration date, then we can't have our meeting that date, right? I would stay away from the first week of uh, July for um, 
Frank, I mean, you can't, you could have a Monday meeting the sixth. Uh, uh, we don't usually have, I mean, I'm, I, I really don't know. I can get back to you on that, but we have no, we have no, um, scheduled uh, celebration plan, nor I don't know which, if, which, if it's Monday or Friday, which will be the, uh, the official holiday as far as the employees, the staff. Yeah. Okay. So let's, what do you think guys just make it the 13th as our, Oh, but then we, it'll be too late to plan things. Um, how about. Maybe we could do it during the week rather than a Monday. Yeah. I think that's probably a good suggestion. Wednesday would be the first supervisors meeting of July. How about if we plan for Thursday the second for our meeting? We'll have time to post that, and I'll ask the township to handle that if we plan for Thursday, June second or July second. Oh, but you'll be away, won't you, Joe? Currently, we plan to be away. Yes. Okay, you'll be away that day. Ah. Uh, God. Odd weekend. What a strange little weekend that's going to be. Could, could we still have the meeting like at the end of June and then plan for July? Yeah, let's do it that way. Let's meet. Or before uh, Joe goes away. I don't know when he's going away. When do you go away, Joe? Monday. So when is July? So did you say July? July uh, June 29th. Monday, yeah. June 29th. Yeah. Actually, we leave the Friday before that. Oh, that's the 26th. Yeah. Do it right after the 4th of July, that Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay, let's plan for the 7th. If we can do it, maybe we'll do it in the afternoon again. We could plan for the 7th of July. Okay. Uh, is that okay? If it's the after, that's, <laughs> that's my son's birthday. So it just, I don't, I want to be available for the nighttime. Yeah, I would think. All right, so let's plan for the afternoon, like one o'clock on the seventh. I'll ask Barbara if we can arrange that, and we hopefully we'll be in in in, in person down at the township building. Is that okay? Uh, um, not to be, I can't do at one o'clock because I have a work commitment from one to three that day. But I wouldn't expect any live meetings uh, through the summer. Yeah. You wouldn't expect any live meetings. Okay. Can we push it up for Becky? We could push up to nine o'clock or nine thirty or whatever. Yeah, I mean, I just from one to three that day, I have a work commitment. So um, whatever uh, you know, whatever works for everyone else. I mean, we just might not always get everybody either. You know, right. would eleven o'clock work for for you, Becky? Yeah, that's great. Do you think so, Fred? Are you thinking that 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 the township building would not be open? Correct. When when there especially in the beginning of the month. Um, if we go to green on the 8th of July, we're going to have to um, prepare the building for the public. So I don't think the building will be opened any earlier than the 15th. And because of the um, number of people that could come to a meeting, uh, we might not be able to do public meetings in person uh, okay, so, so we plan for online the 7th of July at 11 a.m. That's that. good. Okay, thank you, guys. I'll, I'll, I'll write that down. Because oh, that's that's going to take some a little advance um, notice, and, and I guess we'll know for sure when that's happening. And then uh, it looks like we're going to be setting the final date then later in July for the actual um, uh for the actual ceremony. So let's go three weeks out from that and talk about the 25th of July. Is that okay, Barb? July 25th. What's the weekend after that? Whoops, it would be the 1st of August at that point. Do you think it would be safe for just planning for the 1st of August in case something would happen with our meeting on July 7th? Okay. What do you think, guys? Um, yeah, I think that's fine. That should give if us we do it July 25th, we're cutting it really close from the time we have our meeting to even get the responses back, the commitment. 
Yeah, you're right. Um, uh, all right. So it could be the first or second. We could do it that Sunday, uh, whichever is better for. Uh, it always depends on the veterans groups too. What what day would they be available? But and then uh, if worse comes to worse, we move it back to the eighth and ninth. A little bit further than that, we're getting into college already. Yeah, right. We are. So it would be yeah. August the first would be our first choice. Yes. Okay. And will you get back to me to confirm this, Helen, please? As soon as I know, Barb. Okay, that sounds good. So I will contact the veterans groups to to say that that's when we're planning at this point. Is that okay, Fred? Uh, the August, I'm sure it'd be fine. But let me, you want to, when do you want to put the stones in? Um, as soon as we go to yellow, I'll set up a time with, with Greg, if, we, if that's okay, and we'll see if we can get the, them to move them there. I don't want them laying on pallets on the Pico land any longer than necessary. They said they dropped them off by the Pico driveway, and so I have to arrange to get kids to volunteer on a specific weekend. Um, and I'm talking about probably fewer than, fewer than 10 um, boys to um, – shift the stones to the, the, the six different sites of the cemetery and then actually dig them in and set them and uh, backfill. And that's it. Then they're out of there. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. So that's, so we're, we've arranged that. We, we passed number four on our agenda. Number five, old business update, historic houses, public history information to citizens, meeting with our township manager, we have not managed any of that yet, but I think possibly we postpone again to, to August or so with that. How is everybody feeling with that? It would be better to do it face to face. We also talked last time about the um, um, terms Oh. Fred, we, were, we mentioned the last meeting, we thought your, our terms should be, all be extended to three years since uh, <laughs> since we've lost so much time on COVID. Problem. Make it 10. <laughs> You'll let us know, right? I think um, there is two up for a reappointment, and uh, you, Helen, and I think there was one other. Uh, you were both uh, renewed, so... That's, a, that's official. I got my letters, so it might have been me. It, it was me as well, Barb. <laughs> I got right, my you're letters. Stuck, too. You're stuck for another three years, guys. Thank you, Brett. All right. Um, we're, we also want to talk about, uh, under number six, the, the proposed meetings that are coming up that, that affect his, historic properties in the township. Um, if the commission wishes to take a position, we should discuss that if we want to take a position if we want to just be able to vote as or you know take a position as independent voices that's fine as well um i don't know that we want to take a position as a commission on um either either the, the pricket development or the trailer development um i i think uh we've it's a little upsetting to, to read in the newspaper um, Murphy's take on Mr. Troilo's motivation, the, we, we, not in the paper, in the Yardley Voice, there was this whole article on the development that we basically opposed an ice cream parlor, which was not what we voted or talked about. You know, we have no problem with the development of the, of the Ishmael house into something useful. Um, the problem was with the demolition of yet another property, and that was that was not reflected very well in our in that particular article. Um, and I don't know uh, personally. I, I will speak to her or, or send her a note. The, the, Anne, who is the writer of that particular article, to kind of um, reflect what I think we talked about. But if if you guys as 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 a commission, wish me to do that as a member of the commission. I can do it that way or I can do it personally. Did anybody read that article in the Yardley? I, I, I was confused too, Helen, when I, re when I read that article. But one question I had about that is if, if that building isn't demolished, then what happens? Does it just stay there? Like, is he, does he own it or? 
Well, that is it safe? Is it even a safe building? Like, or why isn't it being like restored then? You know, I know the harp is going to address that again whenever they have their meeting, but um, you know, he he Mr. Trail has owned it for over over 20 years and then he did sell it at one point and the a developer came in with a plan for the house using the actual structure that's there and putting an addition on it and the problem came with the traffic commission because it was a drive-through bank to the Arthur Langhorn Road which would add congestion so it was actually denied on the basis of the drive-through part portion of it but we were actually kind of in favor of using the houses that are there as a commission. We were in favor of that, but not not further demolition of houses in the village. That was the issue. Um, so then, he, then that developer gave up the property. It went to sheriff sale, and Mr. Troilo repurchased it, knowing that that was a problem. So at this point, it's in the township um, hands, and. I, I I don't want to say anything, Fred. You 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 might want to comment on that. Uh, he owns both buildings, and um, he's he's been following the um, the blight ordinance, registered the properties, secured the properties. The question will be whether he can knock one of the buildings down, demolish one of the buildings. Uh, that's where we stand at this point. I um, I don't have any other information. Are the buildings protected in any way? Physically, uh, I understand they're secured. People can't get in them. Uh, no, I meant by any type of um, um, no. historical property or something like that. No, no. I mean, technically, since they are his property, uh, they're his buildings. He could. Knock them down in the middle of the night. We're trying to stop that. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Um, we hope that he won't. The problem is the demolition by neglect, and the problem is the 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 roof. The the as long as the houses retain their roofs, um, and there's no water infiltration, they will be okay. But once the roof gets breached, you know, all bets are off structurally at that point. And the the one house, the Danny Quill house, which was known as Carriage Crest, definitely has some roof breach. Um, that That is an issue. There's stuff growing out of the gutters on the other house. But um, yeah, the, the thing is, how how is the um, Board of Supervisors, how do they feel about demolition by neglect and to what extent will they direct the zoning officials to take action when when the roof is breached? That's the problem. What we don't want to do is get into a legal situation where it'll be held up in court until the buildings fall down by themselves. So we the board has had discussions on this su subject and we've decided to work with Cam and his son to make sure that we get the best outcome possible. And that's, you know, that, that we're talking with him and he's talking back and we're having discussions is, uh, I think, is a positive step. Um, uh, you know, we want to save what we can save. Uh, that's as far as I know at this point. Well, if someone could possibly just tell him that we noticed the breach in the roof and that it needs to be repaired, that would be a good thing. Also, the window on the Biles house at the corner in the attic is wide open to the north. So it's getting all the rain coming in, which is certainly damaging um, timbers in that. And it's a simple fix. You close the window. Uh, it's been open for over a month. So somebody needs to comment to that, expect to. And usually zoning sends him a letter and he fixes minor things. Up till now, he has actually repaired things as, as we've complained. So I guess I'll keep complaining at this point, but hopefully, um, you know, we just don't want to see him come in and immediately say, oh, it's structurally unsound because of his lack of maintenance. Um, what I would ask you to do, if you see something like that, 
give Mike Kirk a call and Mike will make sure it's done. Okay, Fred. That's that's a good that's a good answer. So I will for, file an official um, notice to that effect. Just, just anybody else? Call. You're fine. Anybody um, what else? What building respect? was that window? Just so I have it for the minutes. What was the building? Biles House. The Biles House. The Biles, house. The Biles okay. house on the corner. B I L E S. Got it. Um, that's the tavern on the corner. Okay. Um, I think that's that's all that we have now. Oh, Pricket was the other one. Um, the Pricket development. I know people. Uh, there are people on this commission that would not not be sad to see it uh, Wegmans put in the back of that um, but uh, there are, there are a variety of opinions and I please ask you to to look into the into the ramifications um, the the new TND does um, have a strange addition that that lowers the setback to the arterial road so that building that Wegmans could be within 50 feet of I-95 um, and if they have to adhere to the standard, it should be 100 feet from I-95, which makes it more difficult to fit structures on that property. So there are other things about the TND you should look at. It's not a TND. It's, a, it's an overlay district for that particular um, development at Crickets. Uh, personally, I think it's too big, too much in too small space. But... Um, I think it'd be better rather than voting as a commission if we make individual suggestions to the zoning when it, that meeting is, I think, this Thursday night. Also, on a Zoom meeting on township issues. Brad, do you want to weigh in on that one as well? Well, Thursday night will be a special meeting to consider advertising the overlay uh, ordinance. Um, I think, as the historic commission, uh, you should. We, sh we should look at what the bonuses would be to saving the farmhouse and the residents, uh, how, you know, what best way to restore it, keep it in, keep it intact. Uh, so uh, remember, we're not, right now, we're not looking at the project, we're looking at the zoning. And the zoning means setbacks, uh, uh, woodlands protection, traffic concerns, and bonuses for things like preserving historic structures. So it would be very appropriate for you to act as a commission to chime in on how best to preserve the existing structures in the property. Okay, so that's, you, you suggest that we do make a, a statement from the commission. I think that's appropriate. Um, there are all kinds of bonuses given to the developer that add to the amount of impervious surface he can cover uh, based on on saving things on 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 uh, on doing other kinds of green things elsewhere in his development he can take down even more trees it's it's the oddest you really need to read this this zoning um, suggestion uh, I was am particularly concerned about road egress within 10 feet of a historic structure, which is what is proposed. The, one of the major entrances would be less than 10 feet from the back wall of the house. Um, I've subsequently done some more research on that property, and um, I am kind of of the opinion that it's probably earlier than I had previously thought, because in reviewing the Janney family and where they lived, it seems pretty uh, obvious to me that Abel Janney, Janney had to be on that property before John Brown. So that takes it back to the 1740s, 1730s. And that is of concern that um, that house was clearly a little bit older than I thought it was, the, uh, or could be. I mean, I don't, we don't know for sure and until I've never actually been in that house. So I really don't know what the, what the basement looks like, what the timbers look like underneath, um, how deep it is, the basement, et cetera, which would tell me a little more. Um, but I am concerned. Uh, it definitely was there during the American Revolution and was probably utilized by Washington's troops as especially the, the cavalry and probably some of the artillery would have been in Lower Makefield Township. And that 
would have been a, a prize farm for um, cavalry or or um, or storage of, of ammunition, etc., as they were moving through. So that to me is really important. I'd hate to find out down the road from some um, journal or memoir that we read that you know Montgomery was there, or even George Washington himself was at that house, and here it is surrounded by you know, retail stores. It would be really upsetting to find that out later uh, that we've basically destroyed something that could be of value historically to the ambiance of the neighborhood, to property values in the neighborhood, et cetera, and have that have that destroyed. The barn itself is, is unbelievably large um, and beautifully built structurally. Three-story stone barn is just amazing. So I let it hear other people. To me, you know, I, I hate to think of any development, but, um, you know, progress moves on. People have their rights to their property, and they certainly have the right to develop their property in the best possible way. But I would encourage people to realize that that is a historic gem. And if properly developed, you could have some commercial or some retail adjoining it, as long as it's far enough that it doesn't dwarf those structure. Anybody well, want to can, make can we encourage the developer to push back? I mean, how much room is there to be to push back? The, um, the, 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 I'm sure there's there's ways that the um, setbacks can be increased uh, somewhat. I, I don't know the details. Um, the, the, the question that you, do you want to deal with is, do you want to say, you know, create as much buffer as possible uh, to maintain as much of the historic ambiance of the two buildings, um, you know, without jeopardizing the buildings themselves? So. Uh, you know, it's, it's, you know, it, you, you can do whatever you, you can decide whatever you want, how to present to the board of supervisors on Thursday, you know, what your recommendations are with those buildings, but, um, you know, that's totally up to you. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to lead you in a direction that you might not want to go into you. It's, you know, this is, you use your best, your best, um, judgment and figuring out, you know, what you want, uh, you know, knowing that the developer does want to keep those two buildings. So what needs to happen for Thursday night then? As far as it's, it's up to you. It's totally up to you as a commission, what you would like and, and to present it to, you know, and you can have Helen call in on Thursday and 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 speak for the commission on what you would like to see uh, in the ordinance. I personally think that we should stress in the ordinance the uh, the fact that we should preserve it for the historical value that it is, and any way that they can do it to preserve it correctly would be like more than appreciated. You know, so they don't lose sight of the fact that it is because maybe some people that are working on it are losing sight of that. And like you, like Helen mentioned, they might be dwarfing the building. But I'm sure if they know the value that it is, and maybe Helen, you could get that together and present it, that would be an impetus for them to like rethink the 10 foot, you know, abutment to the house, maybe go further back or leaving some of the the foliage there and so forth. Well, it is upsetting to me to think of those trees going that are that are currently um, abutting the house. Um, definitely moving the, the access to the property further north would make a lot of sense to me. And I think should be at least 50, if not 100 feet away from historic structures. Um, currently, the way that they that the, they have a, a dream plan that shows six retail stores sort of circling the property as 
on the perimeter of the barn in the house. The barn in the house in the center is sort of a park thing, which is sort of okay. Um, but if, to, to my mind, if the, if the retail was actually along the edge of Stony Hill Road with parking behind it, it would be better than than having it and then have have the farm be a break um, left at least the, the 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 historic structures. But to do that, then they're going to give up apartments, and I don't see this developer wanting to lower the amount of retail and commercial in or or losing the apartments. So the problem is, how do you scale down all of it? to be smaller and more distant from the historic structures. Um, if, if, he's, if they get 50 feet from um, I-95, Wegmans could go in, but they're looking at at least a 75,000 square foot building in the back corner toward the current development, toward the, um, the, the motel or the, whatever that's called, the, the, the community Makefield executive um, buildings up on the, on the bypass, um, it would be closer to that and connected to that development. You know, maybe a Wegmans would fit. I don't know. It just, it's a lot of parking area around that. And then they were trying to connect that in with interior roads to apartment houses that are over against the Stony Hill Road overpass of I-95. So behind the house and the barn, there would be this road. And then there was a, a proposed amphitheater for public meetings, which suddenly don't seem as important as they once did um, around the house and barn. Sort of that would be the public meeting area. Um, the whole thing is just so big and so much parking and so much commercial that to scale it literally in half, it would be what I would see as, as the only thing that would really work. And I don't I, I just personally don't think this developer will do that, but I will be happy to say, please at least scale it down in half. The, um, I just want to remind the commission that we're talking about right now, we're talking about the actual zoning overlay ordinance, not the project. So Alan, you're very, you know, what you're saying is very apropos. However, that'll be doing land use, the actual design of the, of the of cricket preserve. Uh, this is not the, um, what, what, what would be appropriate is, is bonuses to s create proper setbacks in your opinion, to preserve the building in a certain way, to, to allow for bonuses for impervious surface. That's, that's the kind of, uh, questions and, and, um, concerns that need to be addressed during this meeting and the meeting which would be held, uh, well, the, if, the, if we don't get enough information, the meeting will be continued for another week. But when we decide to advertise the ordinance, the clock starts and then 45 days later, we actually have a public hearing on the ordinance overlay or the overlay ordinance. I see. So, so the, you know, I, I, I understand everybody's wanting to comment on the project itself, but um, the land use, the set, what we call the saldo is, is, is in the code already and is, 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 you know, and have having so much in the project or so little in the project where the apartments go, where the Wegmans would go. Um, that is, is not part of the overlay. The overlay okay. would be to permit any of this to happen. Would it permit all of it to happen? I guess is the question. The overlay ordinance. If you read the ordinance, um, the proposed ordinance, it would allow for this and more. Oh, However, yeah. we, we know what the project is going to be. So you can look at this project as a guide. Right. To help us define what the ordinance will be. And so so as some someone who has helped with the with the TND, the traditional neighborhood development across I-95 for Edgewood Village, and what we're, our vision was there was this walkable village. I guess my problem with this particular overlay district is that it goes counter to that walkable village in terms of it adds a high level of vehicle congestion to a site where we had really wanted to have more walking across Edgewood Village. Um, and, and 
I, you know, basically, personally, I, I think it, it's emphasis on the vehicle. Part of it is what makes it so bad. So uh, that's my opinion. Um, and giving them bonuses to add to that impervious surface, to me, seems counterproductive. But that's my my opinion. That's and that's a very, a very fair set. Uh, that's a very fair concern. And I, if if commission wants to address the amount of walkability uh, to the pro, to the you know address that in the ordinance as far as you know allowing for bonuses um, uh, into the Edgewood Village, that, that that's totally appropriate if you, that's what you want to do. That, that, that's what I see. And I think if you took out that vehicle component, that you would actually have something that we could work with them much more helpfully to maintain the scale of a historic, the historic structures that are there. And I think that because of the pandemic, I think there's going to be a lot of re rethinking of how these right. type of projects are going to be designed anyway. So right. to address the concern, you know, if if the majority of the commission agrees, then that's what you should bring up. Okay. Okay. So, commission, I need you to kind of weigh in here and say what you want yeah. me to say. I mean, I think we all agree that we want to make sure that the property and structures are maintained in the historical, you know, up to you know exactly what Barb had said that we want it to be maintained. Um, okay. The the ordinance um, has walkability features, has bonuses for for keeping historic structures already. But you can you know you can make you can hold their feet to the fire uh, as much as you want. You know you can recommend being more stringent on the bonuses or take the bonuses away because that's what we should have. These are you know historic eligible registered eligible properties um you know those are those are things that you can address as a commission uh, and, and 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 recommend you know and advise the board appropriately i think that's that's very fair uh, uh so you know what 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 i think would be premature is to actually get into the weeds of right. i want a trail here or you know because we we know that in in the in, in the application, uh, there's going to be um, protected trails from the village to this development. So, you know, walking from, from uh, Flowers Fields or, or McCaffrey's or um, the renovated homes on Edgewood uh, to, to this structure, you know, to this, to Wegmans or the apartments, we know that's going to happen. But, you know, the, the, you know, how you word the ordinance and how the developer is rewarded or penalized for what he decides to do, that's going to be in the ordinance. So you need, yeah. to, you need to address that, in my opinion. So, so please take a moment to read the ordinance. Um, the, I guess it's posted on the website for the township. And check out the, particularly the part about bonuses um, which imp increase the impervious surface surface ratio and, you know, make it so that he can pay, that means he can pave more. And the tree ordinance, which protects them from removing the trees that are there. So those in particular are two areas that he gets incredible bonuses for things that today most builders have to do anyway, as part of, of when they build, they, they need to do the green design, etc. That's already part of of building general practices. So we really shouldn't be giving them extra bonuses for some of that. Um, they will have to do that anyway in order to sell it to their um, investors. But the amount, how large it is, and then if you feel like you need to kind of weigh in, if you would all email me um, what, what you want to add to this, um, and somebody wants to make a motion that, that Becky's what Becky said, um, that we're particularly concerned about the importance um, of the historic, preserving the historical ambiance of the structures. That would be awesome if somebody would make a, 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 a motion to that effect and then second it and we can vote on that. And then, um, then you can email me your other opinions and I'll put them in. 
I would motion that the commission is interested in preserving the um, historical structures and the environment in which they're in. Do we have a second? I second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. No, all right, all so I will emphasize. The, the ordinance and the project documents are on the website, township website. It's, it's on yeah. the township yeah. website. I, okay. It's okay. a special look, page oh. just for the uh, the whole the, uh, the ordinance. You have all the documents there, including the proposed ordinance. Helen, in the meantime, would you want to just start drawing up some of the things that you had mentioned about the, uh, you know, like Fred said about the bonuses and so forth? Do you want to do some of that legwork? Okay, I, I will definitely mention that. And I'll, I'm going to take out the section that is in the proposed ordinance for historic preservation. Um, it, and they don't, I don't think they actually say preservation. They say historic restoration or historic adaptive reuse. There's something, there's some specific wording. So I'll look at that as well. Um, Cause there's a difference. Uh, restoration means actually kind of restoring it with the, um, property uh, intact, uh, uh, a, a adaptive reuse means you can kind of rip out the entire center and do, you know, a modern structure inside a building. And rehabilitation means that you keep what's there, what's already been modified, and you work with that, which is what I would prefer, because these houses have already been modernized to some extent, and a lot of them, we really don't want a, a full restoration to you know, basically candles being put back in, but we want, but we want something that whatever the prickets did, it kind of stays. And then uh, maybe like a kitchen upgrade or something like that, you know, but, but uh, so it could be used for an office and it could also be used for a residence or whatever. The same with the barn. Um, I don't have any particular ob objection to using the barn for storage or for an adaptive reuse. I've seen it built barns turned into beautiful art galleries or and it was an antique store that the Prickets had in there. Um, but taking out all the structure to kind of put it into something else would be, would be upsetting. I don't know how you guys feel about that. Yeah, Cause we don't want to lose anything structurally or, you know, right. to potentially hurt anything that, you know, then you can't redo that. It's it's done. So we want to make sure that you know nothing like that is included. Okay. So what we want is probably some kind of a facade protect protection, or you know, basically, I don't want huge additions put on these buildings either, like a modern box that, like they've done with the Mercer Museum or something like that. Um, but on the other hand, kind of a tasteful. Uh, Tasteful additions, maybe as long as they don't damage the structure. So you can do an addition that could also be ripped off by somebody else to restore it to the original. That's that's okay with, at least for me. But for, um, you know, I'm, I'm not like a pristine restoration person, but I, but I don't want it damaged either. A historic property should stay the way it is. And anything this addition should look like an addition. It shouldn't be something that's tacked on to look look like it was there, and and then it's fake. You know. And I would write I, I would write all that up, Helen, so we okay. have it. You know, I, I agree with you. You could say that um, the, the the commission wishes to um, keep as much of the the current look of the buildings, and the bonus will be if you if you you know. And bonuses will be proportional to how much you can actually keep. So if they keep 90%, you know, or 100%, there there'd be a bigger bonus for for like impervious surface. Uh, if they only keep 50%, it would be less of a bonus. And if, and if it's like 30 or 40%, there's no bonus. You know, anything less than 40% of of keeping the original um, facade would be would be no bonus. Uh, uh, that, that's okay. that's the kind of thing you want to you would. It would be, I think, uh, appropriate in, in, in this discussion. Okay, that makes sense, Fred. Does everyone like that or not? I agree. I think I think what Becky said and what I said at the beginning, the mo more we can make people aware of the historical value of that home 
and how, like Becky said, once it's gone, it's gone. So if we can preserve as much as we can and like piggybacking on what Fred said, it's bonuses if you do keep it as a historical facade and you do this and you do that. And I think that, like you said, developers now, some of the things that we're going to be asking, they know that they have to abide by it anyway. Okay. Um, okay, I think that's that's pretty much what we had on our agenda. Um, uh, I erased my agenda, went to sleep. <laughs> um, uh, does any does any of the commissioners have anything they want, want to report? I have nothing. Helen, there's moment. no public comment. No public comment. Great. Okay. Does anybody have anything that they've noticed around the township? Um, and keep your eyes open. Sometimes, you know, an old house suddenly becomes uh, vacant and starts to show us some signs and nobody's paying attention. So when you're riding around, do look and uh, let me know or let um, let uh, Kurt or Jim Majewski or whoever, let, let them know as well if you see something that needs to be reported. Um, and I guess we're going to meet in June. Uh, um, no, we're not going to meet. Uh, we're not going to meet the second meeting in June. We'll meet in early July. July 7th at meeting. 11. July 7th at 11 a.m. Yep. I'll put that in the minutes. Yeah, put it in the minutes. That, that's great. Is that okay with everybody? Yeah, sure. thanks for everything, Helen. Thank yeah. you so much for coming, and, and uh, we'll, see, we'll see you then in July. Okay. Thank you, Fred. Stay safe, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.